Welcome to China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. Our top story, waves of Chinese nationals setting foot on American soil without visas. Could Beijing's spies access U.S. military bases through a visa loophole? Lawmakers now butting heads with the Biden administration because of it. I don't agree with the fact they're just coming for economic reasons. President Biden hosting the leaders of Japan and the Philippines this week. Details on the historic trilateral meeting between Washington and its Asian allies. Germany's chancellor traveling to China with three ministers and top CEOs. What's driving the trip amid a push to de-risk from China? And an expert panel zooming in on China's disinformation campaign targeting Taiwan. With the U.S. 2024 election just around the corner, what can America learn from the Democratic Island? Chinese nationals can set foot on American soil without a visa. Is the system bringing economic benefits to the U.S. or giving Chinese spies potential access to Guam and its U.S. military bases? Two Republican lawmakers blasted the Biden administration for not closing what they call a visa loophole. The 2009 policy allows Chinese nationals to enter the northern Mariana Islands, a U.S. territory, without a visa for two weeks. The islands are 120 miles from Guam, home to two U.S. military bases. Even though Chinese nationals still need a visa to enter Guam, an illegal boat ride could also get them there. And some of them have been caught trying to charter illegal trips to Guam. In the last two years, local authorities reported about 120 attempted entries to Guam by Chinese citizens. All of them were unlawful. Senator Joni Ernst told the New York Post that instead of listening to her calls to close this gap and prevent further espionage, the Biden administration dragged its feet for four months and now is defending an outdated policy. She and over 30 lawmakers expressed concerns that Chinese spies could exploit this policy to the Homeland Security Secretary last November. The Department of Homeland Security responded, saying the policy brings significant economic benefits to the U.S. and that Chinese nationals are not allowed to enter Guam without a visa. The controversy comes as illegal Chinese immigrants are entering the U.S. southern border at breakneck speed and as a growing number of Chinese nationals posing as tourists have breached U.S. military bases. Over 24,000 of them entered the border illegally last year. That's a 1,000 percent spike compared to the year before. And over 18,000 already came in through the border this year as of February. This coincides with rising concerns over Chinese espionage. An illegal Chinese immigrant was arrested this March for breaching a U.S. military base. In addition, Chinese nationals posing as tourists have also been found scuba diving off a launch site for U.S. spy satellites, stepping into a U.S. missile range in New Mexico and driving onto a military base in Alaska. To discuss more about the concerns of Chinese nationals freely entering U.S. territories due to visa loopholes, we spoke to retired U.S. Air Force Brigadier General Robert Spaulding. He's also the author of War Without Rules. General Spaulding, thank you so much for joining us. Great to have you back on the show. Thank you. It's great to be back. Now, concern is rising that Chinese nationals can enter Guam by first entering the Northern Mariana Islands, or CNMI, after the Biden administration continued an Obama policy that allows Chinese nationals to go there on a tourism program. Why do you think Biden is doing this? I think it's been going on for a long time. It actually be, uh, predates Biden. Uh, it was going on during the Obama administration. When I was um, at the embassy in Beijing, uh, I talked to the State Department about this. They weren't really stopping people that were coming to the United States for birth tourism, basically, so they they could have their kid and it could be an American citizen. It's something that's being exploited on purpose, and the State Department really is not doing anything about it. Now, the special agent in charge of Homeland Security Investigations in Honolulu told a local outlet that the Chinese nationals are primarily coming there for economic reasons, not anything malicious. But what about the ones who are going there not for economic reasons? What harm could they do? I don't understand how anybody can say what reasons they're coming for 
and actually know for sure. And so I don't agree with the fact they're just coming for economic reasons. Certainly that may be one of the reasons. I think what we should do is delve a little bit more deeply into the loyalty the population has to the Chinese Communist Party and, of course, the, the, the role that the party plays in terms of intimidating their family to get them to do things. It's quite well known that national security law in China requires that every citizen become a spy for the Chinese Communist Party. Now, one senator is saying this puts the military at risk. Given the tensions we are seeing between these two countries, what are the necessary, necessary steps needed to change this? I think the State Department needs to basically uh, stop allowing Chinese citizens to do birth, citizen, uh, birth tourism. I think that we ought to take a very, very hard look at the ability for Chinese nationals to come into the country to do things. And unfortunately, we're just not taking them seriously. It's not until something grave happens where the Chinese Communist Party activates these people that are uh, within our midst that we're going to find the consequences of it. We knew, for example, before 9-11 that there was a, a chance of terrorism, but we didn't take the steps. So here, once again, we understand a threat, but we're not taking steps to mitigate it or protect the American people. And that's just um, that's just wrong. Now, there are Chinese nationals who are coming for asylum purposes. How do we balance that? One of the things that I would say is that if they're uh, one of the targeted categories, whether they uh, be Falun Gong or Uyghur, I think that might be a good indication of somebody that is really uh, under duress. But other than that, I would be very skeptical of a Chinese national coming unless they have some uh, you know, verifiable ties to a dissident group. General Spaulding, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. President Biden is hosting the leaders of Japan and the Philippines this week. The allies seek to boost economic and defense ties to offset China's growing power in the region. Biden's bilateral summit with Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida on Wednesday will bring an upgrade in defense ties with Japan. On Thursday, Kishida will become the second Japanese leader to address a joint meeting of Congress. His predecessor, Shinzo Abe, gave a speech in 2015. Biden will also hold a meeting with Philippines President Ferdinand Marcos on Thursday. Last year, Marcos and Biden joined Kishida for a trilateral summit that focused on the South China Sea. Other issues on the agenda include managing risks from North Korea and the wars in Ukraine and Gaza. Japan could join the U.S., U.K. and Australia in a deal aimed at countering China. Defense chiefs from the three countries said Monday that they are considering adding Japan to the AUKUS pact. The security deal aims to get Australia at least three nuclear-powered submarines to bolster its deterrence. Australia's former defense minister told NTD that the deal could fill a capability gap. So what this arrangement has done has mean, meant that by being able to have a rotation of American and UK submarines from 2027, that capability gap which we identified at the time I was the Defence Minister uh, is in fact being plugged again, but in a, albeit in a different way. Submarines are only part one of the AUKUS deal. Part two focuses on developing critical technology, including artificial intelligence, quantum computing and hypersonic weapons. This is where the defense ministers are considering adding Japan into the mix. In a statement, the ministers said they are confident that adding like-minded partners would only strengthen the pursuit of arming their forces with advanced military capabilities. Though there are concerns that Japan has not done enough when it comes to protecting sensitive data. U.S. Deputy Secretary of State Kirk Campbell said the U.S. has been nudging Japan to upgrade its security systems to make it easier to share classified information between allies. That's according to a report from the Financial Times. Japan's prime minister is set to meet with President Biden in Washington this week. The two are expected to announce a major upgrade in defense ties. The Navy and the Pentagon have poured billions into building more ships to counter China, but U.S. shipyards aren't keeping up. The U.S. Navy said four of its most important shipbuilding projects are years behind schedule. That includes two submarines, an aircraft carrier, and a new class of frigate warship. At the Navy's largest trade show on Monday, officers in charge of shipbuilding programs chose not to brief reporters and analysts. 
It marked a departure from tradition, where Navy program managers usually update industry executives and reporters about how their projects are developing. Turning to the South China Sea, U.S. Indo-Pacific Commander John Aquilino says Beijing wants to forcibly gain ground in the region. This comes as China continues to ramp up territorial claims at the Philippines' doorstep. The illegal claim of everything inside of the self-proclaimed 9 or 10 dash line as Chinese sovereign territorial waters has no basis in international law. Aquilino added China's actions are, quote, dangerous, illegal, and they are destabilizing the region. Beijing sees virtually the entire South China Sea as part of its own territory, reaching hundreds of miles south and east of China's island province of Hainan. The region asserts a so-called nine-dash line to mark what it believes is its jurisdiction. That's despite a tribunal ruling in 2016 that China has no legal claim over the region. Zooming in on the Philippines, the nation has been dealing with a rise in Chinese military aggression around nearby shoals. Experts said the U.S. must live up to its promise and stand firm with the country. We would find that not too many other places in the region are willing to host us or willing to let us in or align with us if we leave the Filipinos in the, in the lurch. Worth noting, the U.S. and the Philippines are allied nations bound by a decades-long defense treaty. In the event that China attacks Taiwan, a new rule could require the U.S. to terminate the U.S.-China tax treaty if it passes. NTD's Jason Blair has more. The U.S.-China tax treaty was signed in 1984. It's designed to prevent double taxation for companies and individuals who do business in both countries. Representative Tony Gonzalez introduced new legislation that would require the U.S. Department of Treasury to cease the treaty if China launches an armed attack on Taiwan. Tony Gonzalez said in a statement, quote, ensuring the safety and security of our partners in the Indo-Pacific region is essential to our nation's economic and national security endeavors. This legislation sends a clear message to the Chinese Communist Party. If you invade Taiwan, severe consequences will follow. Co-sponsor Don Davis said, quote, We must deter unprovoked aggression because a threat to democracy anywhere is a threat to democracy right here at home. The bill, H.R. 7874, is currently waiting to be heard by the House Committee on Ways and Means. Senator John Cornyn also introduced a version of the bill in the U.S. Senate. Jason Blair, NTD News. Germany's top corporate brass is joining Chancellor Olaf Scholz when he visits China later this month. Among the big names, the CEOs of Siemens, Mercedes-Benz and chemicals maker Merck KGAA. Despite Germany pushing for a strategy to de-risk from China, the communist country remains its largest trading partner. Last year, German direct investment into China hit a record high, $12.9 billion, an over 4 percent increase from the previous year. Some of Germany's biggest firms, like chemical giant BASF and automaker Volkswagen, still bank on China as a growth motor, though a number of smaller firms have started to change course, taking steps to legally separate their Chinese businesses. Russia's foreign minister is in China, conducting what the Kremlin called contact at the highest level between the two neighbors. Their enhanced relations have U.S.-led Western society concerned. When the top Russian diplomat met with the head of the Chinese regime, Xi Jinping, on Tuesday, he said the re-election of President Putin ensures the success of China-Russia relations and it's good for further development in all areas. The trip is seen as laying the groundwork for Putin's potential trip to China next month. An expert panel zooming in on a Chinese disinformation campaign targeting Taiwan. With the 2024 election just around the corner, what can the U.S. learn from the Democratic island? NTD's Sam Wong has the details. A panel of experts spoke in Washington, D.C. about the Chinese Communist regime's disinformation campaign targeting Taiwan. From its cyberspace to its presidential election, the small democratically governed island has been a main target of China's influence operations. Taiwan's experience is broadly applicable to the international community. The use of the information space, the use of the social media, the use of technology that they are applying, at least in the Taiwan case study, is not only limited to Taiwan. 
For decades, the Chinese Communist Party has viewed Taiwan as a breakaway territory and has vowed to take it back by force if necessary. That's despite never having ruled it. According to digital defense organization DoubleThink Lab, Beijing has been flooding the island's information space with rumors. These narratives reportedly came from fake social media accounts, which makes it harder to trace them to their source. Our a comprehensive report documenting at least 84 narratives on U.S. skepticism, discrediting the U.S. itself as a country and also discrediting the Taiwan-U.S. partnerships. A recent report from Microsoft found an uptick in disinformation targeting Taiwan's political figures during election time. Analysts say transparency is crucial in order to protect free speech and debunk the disinformation targeting the island. In civil community, we need to like um, transparent and open all of the results of the factual report. Why we do this is because we want a healthy democracy. It's not because we want to get rid of something or we don't want something in our country. With America's 2024 presidential election just around the corner, experts say Taiwan could serve as a case study for the U.S. Taiwan has so many experience and knowledges can offer the American government to, to uh, prevent or push back the disinformation from all over the world. Reporting from Washington, D.C., Sam Wong, NTD News. That's all for today's China in Focus on YouTube. We're now sharing a shortened version of our program here after being demonetized for three years. If you'd like to support us, consider donating. Find us at donorbox.org slash China dash in dash focus or subscribe to our partner platform, Epic TV, where you can watch our full episodes. Just click the link down below. Here's what to look out for in our second half. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell getting behind an effort to separate TikTok from its Chinese owner. He's demanding Congress take action, calling the app a threat to national security. Across the pond, a group of heavyweight EU politicians are aligning themselves with TikTok creators, despite security concerns. That's in hope of stockpiling more support ahead of the June elections. In an ideal world, probably German politicians uh, wouldn't want to use TikTok, but since so many young people are using it in Germany, um, the decision is right, I think, to go there and use it. Otherwise, they will only receive political content from the extremist forces. And China's real estate sector facing another setback. Details on a Chinese state-owned bank's rare yet legal move against a mainland developer. That's coming up. Thanks for watching China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. See you tomorrow.